Hello again. Today's talk is going to be about the Euler relation. That's this expression right here. It's e to the i x equals cosine x plus i sine x. And this is this would seem pretty dry. It's it's very different than the mechanical strength of materials, dynamics things I've been talking about. But this is pretty important. It shows up all kinds of places in engineering and science. And when I learned it the first time a long, long time ago, it was just sort of presented to me, and they just said, sort of, here, don't worry about where this come from, comes from, just accept it. Well, I always wondered where it came from, and I finally got around to figuring it out, and it turns out it's not that hard. Now, the, the thing I always wondered is, does this have any innate physical significance? And the short answer is, no, it doesn't. Um, it's it's a, a relationship that we use a lot. Here's another one that I'm sure you've seen. Well, does that have any innate physical significance? No, it doesn't. I mean, if you plot it right, it turns out to be a circle. But it's not, there's, there's nothing, it's not like Newton's law. This isn't f equals ma. This is just a relationship between trigonometric functions. And we don't seem to have any problem working with this. Okay, so we shouldn't have any problems working with that. The thing that uh, uh, upsets my students sometimes, makes them scratch their heads, is the existence of i, the square root of minus 1. And uh, to my way of thinking, calling that an imaginary number was a terrible idea. Calling this expression real and that one imaginary is terrible because imaginary suggests that somehow it's not a legitimate number. It is. If I were king of the world, these would be called red numbers and these would be called blue numbers or something like that, something non-judgmental non, uh, like that. But we're stuck with the word imaginary. Don't let the fact that the word imaginary has all kinds of connotations with it let you think that this is not some legitimate mathematical entity. It is. Okay? It's the square root of minus one. We use it all the time. It's just as legitimate as any other number. Okay? So, the way Euler came up with this, and by the way, E-U-L-E-R, looks like it ought to be Euler if you're an American. If you're German, that's pronounced Euler, so that's how I'm going to pronounce it. Okay, Leonhard Euler was one of these just brilliant mathematicians who makes you a little jealous. He was playing around with Taylor series expansions, made a very simple substitution, and noticed this was true. And this was important enough that it got, he was named after him. Right? Now, because he's such a prolific guy, or was such a prolific guy, he lived hundreds of years ago, um, there's all kinds, there's Euler equations, Euler relations, Euler numbers, there's all kinds of things named after the guy. This is what I was, I was always taught that as the Euler relation. If you look it up in Wikipedia or something, that's, that's what you see. So let's talk about where this comes from. The, the basis of this is a Taylor series expansion. Now you might have learned this in calculus class. A Taylor expansion, a Taylor series expansion I guess, is a way of writing out an equation in approximate form. All right? And that doesn't sound too useful, except that if you do this right, you're able to write out very complicated equations in a very simple series form. And you can approximate them more and more accurately by putting more and more terms in the series. Okay? Your calculator is basically doing something like this inside when it's calculating sines and cosines for you, that kind of thing. Okay. So here's what a Taylor series expansion looks like. All right, and it's a it's an infinite series, so it goes on forever. Um, I don't have an infinitely large blackboard, so I'm going to stop there. Now this exclamation point right there is a factorial. So one factorial is one, two factorial is two times one. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, and so on, okay? Now, oops, I got that wrong there. That's actually A. Um, a is a number, all right? Some number. Uh, and what we say is we expand a function about A. What that means is if I'm going to calculate a bunch of value, uh, this function for a bunch of values of X, I'll pick A that's near the X I'm going to use so uh, I get a better approximation. It becomes more accurate. Right? So this is how this works. Now, if A is 0, then you have something called a Maclaurin series expansion. It's just a subset, and it's called a Maclaurin expansion. Okay? And it's a subset of the Taylor series expansion. All Maclaurin expansions are Taylor series expansions. 
And so if A goes to 0, this looks a little differently now. Uh, so I'll write out f of x equals f of 0 plus f prime of 0 x. And so on. Okay. Now that prime is a derivative. Okay. It's the, the first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, and so on. Okay. Now, if those derivatives don't exist, clearly you can't uh, you can't have a, an expansion. But if the derivatives don't exist, the expansion isn't all that useful to begin with. There's a Maclaurin series expansion. That's what it looks like. All right. So what Euler was doing is he was looking at the Taylor series expansion. I'm sorry, the Maclaurin series expansion of that. Uh, e, not e to the i x, but just e to the x. Okay, and if you write this out, okay, okay, e to the x. Okay, I'm going to have to consult my, my notes here if I'm going to get this right. Okay, it is one plus x plus x squared over two. 6 plus x to the 4th over 24. Okay, there's what e to the x looks like as a Maclaurin series expansion. So you can see there's x to the 0, x to the 1, x to the 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. And, all right, 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, 3 factorial is 3 times 2, that's 6. 4 times 3 times 2 is 24, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 120, and so on. So those are the factorials. So there you go. That's, this has been known for a long time. And he had this insight. He was one of the first to treat complex numbers as real legitimate mathematical entities. So he said, what if I do this? What if I say x equals i, and we'll just call it maybe theta, all right? i theta. Well, let's call it i z. Let's theta look, let's, let's iz. I just need a variable that isn't x, so I'll call it z. And he said, well, let's see. e to the i z equals 1 plus i z plus i z squared over 2 plus that i z to the third over 6 i z to the, oops, fourth over 24, and so on. Okay, so far so good. Well, what's i squared? i squared is minus 1. i cubed is minus i. i to the fourth is 1, and so on. Okay, so what you notice is when you work this out, you get Let's see, and again, I'm going to use my cheat sheet here. iz minus z over 2, z squared over 2, um, minus z, sorry, iz cubed over 6, plus z, z to the 4th over 24, plus iz to the 5th, over 120 minus z to the sixth over 720 plus blah 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 blah. Okay, you can do that. You can work this out for yourself. Okay. So what? This is the difference between a mathematician and an engineer, probably. Looks at that, and where most of us would just scratch our heads and go, "All right, so what?" So well, what if I put the real parts in one side and the imaginary parts? I'm sorry, on one side, in one group, and the imaginary parts in another. So let's do that. So the real parts go 1 minus z squared over 2 plus z to the 4th over 24 minus z to the 6th over 720. And I think I might have some more. Uh, that's close enough. Plus i times, let's see, let's do this. Uh, let's see, got that, got that. So z minus z cubed over 6 plus z to the fifth over 120 
plus. Do I have one more here? Uh, let's see, that's good enough. Yeah, so let's do one more here. Z to the seventh over 5,040, which is the next number in the series. Okay, so we got that. All right. Now, so far, this, what does this mean? Well, here's, here's the brilliant insight. Well, the real brilliant insight was to say, I'm going to treat I as a, as a number, not a real number in the sense that it's not imaginary, but in the sense that this is a legitimate thing to do. There's nothing mathematically wrong with doing that. So we did. Now, we're almost done here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this, because I'm running out of room on my board. He noticed that that is also is also the McLaurin series expansion for cosine. And that, inside the parentheses, is the McLaurin series expansion for sine. So, by writing this out, substituting that in, writing the whole thing out, and then collecting the real and the imaginary terms, he was able to say, this is true. Okay, now I'm using the, the variable z here. If you prefer to write this as x or theta or something, as you can, um, usually we see this written with an x there, so I'll just change it real quick. A variable is a variable. It doesn't really matter what we call it, as long as we're consistent. And there's the Euler relation. That's where it comes from.